What's up lads, welcome back to the basic item overview for Smite Season 6. In this series I'm going to cover every item in Smite, what they do and where and why they're useful. Of course this is a bit more of a basic guide for newer players, so if you've been playing for 5 years you don't need to leave a comment saying you already knew this. Though I imagine even experienced players could learn a thing or two from this as well. With the new season just around the corner I'm going to be pumping out all kinds of guides from newbie to advanced so be sure to subscribe to the channel for that. YouTube tells me 97.6% of you watching aren't even subscribed. What are you playing at? I'm kidding, just glad you're watching. Alright, so today we're going to be covering every Blessing, Relic and Boots option in the game. Then in following videos I'm going to cover the Magical specific items, then Physical specific items, and then Neutral items, ones that can be built by anyone regardless of the power type. Alright, so I'm going to try and keep these things quite short and sweet, so let's dive right into it with the Blessings. So straight off the bat, the Blessings are split into two groups. Conquest and Non-Conquest Blessings. The Conquest Blessings are available everywhere regardless of game mode, including in Conquest. The other three non-conquest blessings, as you can probably guess, are only available outside of conquest in modes like Joust or Arena for example. All of these blessings cost 700 and provide unique bonuses and additional benefits once they evolve, and they're definitely meant to be built at the start of the game with the starting gold that you get. Evolving the item basically involves completing a quest of sorts, which we'll cover later. For the most part these are worth buying no matter what you're playing. The benefits versus the cost is higher than any other item, though they do need to be sold later on once you reach full build of course. Which one you want depends on the situation and god you're playing though, so let's get into that. So the first one up here is Assassin's Blessing. Now the naming scheme for these blessings doesn't necessarily dictate who it can and can't be built on. This blessing gives extra damage versus jungle camps and monsters, plus healing and mana restoration upon killing them. This blessing is not just a generic build on assassins type of item, don't fall into that trap just because of the name of it. This is specifically for junglers in conquest and shouldn't be bought anywhere else. If you're an assassin in arena, just don't buy this, please. The evolution quest for this item requires that you kill 50 jungle monsters. You can also gain 5 stacks for a god kill and once you complete it, the evolved item provides the same benefits as before, but also comes with 10 additional penetration. Okay, so the Hunter's Blessing is a little bit less confusing, and it's mostly to be built on Hunters actually, with a few exceptions. Hunter's Blessing provides 15 extra damage on all of your basic attacks and some mana regen. The quest is to kill or assist on 75 enemy lane minions, as always a god kill provides 5 stacks as well. And once evolved this item gets much more powerful, giving you an additional 15 basic attack damage on top of the 15 you already got, and also 15% attack speed. All very useful stats for Hunters, either in Conquest or elsewhere. It can also be useful on other basic attack focused gods though too, like Kronos or Sol for example, especially if you're playing them in the ADC role. Mage's Blessing is an interesting one. It can actually be used on a wide variety of gods, not just mages. It provides power and mana regen based on missing mana, so the lower your mana gets, the faster you'll regen, and also 10 additional damage on all of your damaging abilities. The quest is to kill or assist 75 lay minions again, with god kills providing 5 stacks, and once it evolves it provides an additional 10% cooldown reduction. So this item just provides a lot of generically good stats which are useful on many different gods. Most mages can make use of this in any game mode, but it's also decent on other ability based gods like hunters like Chiron or Ula, plus even some assassins or warriors can make it work depending where they're at, though often they will have a better choice than mage's blessing. For example, warrior's blessing. This item provides defensive stats with health, damage reduction, healing and mana restoration. The quest for this item requires that you damage enemy gods to gain stacks. You gain 1 stack for each hit on an enemy god, but this has a cooldown of 10 seconds. This is also what triggers the heal and mana restoration on the item. Similarly to other blessings here, a god kill or assist grants 3 stacks immediately, and at 15 stacks the item evolves gaining additional 10 of each protections. So this one is definitely good on its namesake of warriors. For the most part that's all it's used for, though certain guardians or even some assassins that want to be tanky and play in solo lane will buy this if they don't want other options. Mages and hunters should definitely stay away from this item I think. And the final Conquest Blessing, Guardian's Blessing is aimed at mostly tanky and supportive gods. This item provides health, protections, mana regen, and the main feature of the item, regen and extra gold on minion assists. This is specifically for assists, if you're last hitting minions you won't get these benefits. That's why this item is kinda overpowered, but it's aimed mostly at supportive gods that won't be last hitting in lanes. To evolve this item you need 50 lane minion assists, and the item gains 4 extra GP5 which is gold per 5 seconds. So this item gives you extra gold generation and regen for the trade off that you must avoid last sitting minions early on. This lends itself mostly to guardians as you may have guessed, but any god that wants to be supportive and like assist their teammates will make good use of this. And of course this item is nearly necessary in the support role in conquest. Alright so let's cover the final 3 non conquest blessings before we move on to relics and boot choices. So I gotta say I have a lot less of experience with these ones cause like the vast majority of my playtime nowadays is in conquest where these items aren't actually available. But they're fairly simple so we should be fine with this. So Attacker's Blessing is the most widely useful of the three in my view. It simply gives some power with a quest to deal damage to enemies to evolve the item and it gains 10 penetration. 
This is just universally pretty good on most gods that want to deal damage. Any god that wants to do damage is happy with some power and penetration, so if you're outside of conquest and want some aggressive early game stats, this is definitely your pick. Defender's Blessing is the reverse, giving health and protections with a quest to mitigate damage. This means taking damage that is reduced by your protection, so more protections makes this easier to stack, so it's naturally better on tanks. On evolving, this item gains even more health plus some mana too, which is nice. This one is less universally good since warriors or guardians blessing often outclass this even in non-conquest game modes, but it is there as a simpler option. And finally, specialist blessing is neither defensive nor offensive, it's more focused on utility, giving mana regen and cooldown reduction with a quest to either damage enemies or heal allies, evolving and gaining 10% movement speed. So once again, this is usually outclassed by other options in my experience. Mage's Blessing from before gives similar benefits, namely the mana regen and cooldown reduction are the same, but it offers much more useful stats overall than this, but once again, this is an option outside of Conquest. Alright, so with Blessings done, let's move on to covering Smite's Relics, what they do, the best ways to use them, all that stuff. So Relics in Smite are activatable items that you get for free at level 1 and level 12, with powerful effects but long cooldowns. Each relic in the game has a base form which you get for free, and an upgrade that costs 500 gold that can be done at any time after you buy the initial relic. So first up here are the two key defensive relics for damage dealers, Purification Beads and Aegis Amulet. These are your go-to relics for any squishy god like a mage or a hunter for example. Crowd control is very prevalent in Smite, a single stun can easily get you killed if you aren't prepared to deal with it. Purification Beads can remove that CC from you and make you immune to new ones thrown at you for 2 seconds. Upgrading it will also reduce its cooldown by 30 seconds. This is invaluable and makes Beads the most popular relic in the game by a long shot. Tanks usually don't need this as they can survive through a CC without dying, but any squishy god wants beads almost every game. The cooldown is very long on these though, at 160 or 130 seconds depending on if you have it upgraded or not, so use them wisely. Where beads makes you immune to crowd control, Aegis Amulet is the other side of the coin, making you immune to damage for 1.5 seconds, but also preventing you from doing anything except moving. This has a cooldown of 180 seconds base, or 150 upgraded, so as with beads, use this sparingly. Another thing to note with Aegis is that you're also immune to healing, so you can't just pop Aegis and then get someone to heal you back to full health, that won't work. Okay, so the next batch of like the most popular relics in my opinion are all aimed at team fighting and affecting multiple allies or enemies. These are most useful on supportive gods and or tanky gods since they have free relic slots that squishies don't because obviously squishies need to buy beads and Aegis usually. These team fighting relics consist of Heavenly Wings, formerly Sprint, a lot of people still call it that, Horrific Emblem and Magic Shell. All three of these relics can affect multiple players in a large area, which makes most of them very useful in the right situation. As it stands right now, Heavenly Wings, Horrific Emblem and Shell are applicable in almost every situation and are pretty safe to pick up every game if you want to be like on a tanky or supportive pick like Geb or Amaterasu for example. Heavenly Wings makes your team faster, immune to slows and also gives them haste when you have it upgraded. Haste makes you immune to that slow you get when firing your auto attacks, it's very powerful to have haste. Horrific Emblem is sort of the counterpart to Heavenly Wings, instead of speeding up your team it will slow down the enemy team, also reducing their attack speed and when upgraded reducing their damage output. This is very powerful when you could hit 3 or more people with it, but this is also soft countered by Heavenly Wings though since it removes slows of course. And finally there's Shell, which gives all allies affected a temporary shield for 3 seconds. When upgraded it also gives allies 2 block stacks which completely negate the damage of incoming basic attacks. Being able to buff your team in this way and essentially give them extra health and prevent them from taking damage will always be powerful. Plus the block stacks provided are really useful in certain situations against like Hunters and Kali and stuff like that. So a quick note on Meditation. I'm sure if you're new to the game you get recommended to buy this relic, my advice is to simply ignore that. Med can be useful in certain situations, but if you swap it out for any of the three relics I just mentioned, you'll be better off for it. A lot of the smite recommended picks for items are just like really bad, you'll get used to it. And Frenzy is another teamfight focused relic, but it's not on the same level as the three premier ones in Shell, Sprint and Horrific. It essentially buffs your team's damage output and attack speed for a short time. It can be useful, but it is mostly outclassed by the main three and usually want two of those instead of Frenzy. Okay, so let's cover Thorns, Teleport, Blink, Bracer and Sundering Spear quickly before we finish up with Curse and Phantom. So Thorns does what you probably think it does, reflects damage back to the attacker. When upgraded it will also reduce the amount that enemies can lifesteal from you as well. This is definitely not as universally useful as the relics we've covered previously. It's mainly built specifically as a way to deal with certain AA focus characters like Hunters, Kali or even like Anubis, like gods that like to use lifesteal a lot. It's also mostly for tanks, I wouldn't really recommend getting it on a squishy since you die before you even get much benefit from the effect. Teleport is also a marginal item, but a very useful one in the right scenario. That scenario being basically just solo laning conquest. This relic allows you to immediately teleport to a friendly tower from anywhere on the map, and once upgraded you can also teleport to friendly wards. So for most roles and game modes this isn't very useful. 
TPing from base to a joust tower only saves you, what, like 10 seconds? But in soul lane, it's a very useful relic to have to keep you from missing farm. I'm not going to go too much into the specifics of why it's so useful in solo lane here, but usually this is something you want as a solo laner. Blink is definitely a very useful relic on certain gods. It's most useful on assassins and some warriors or guardians. Mages and hunters once again usually need beads and aegis and they usually can't afford to get a blink. Blink allows you to teleport a short distance providing you're not in combat. Upgrading this will also give you a 10% damage mitigation buff for a short time after you blink. So yeah, this is mostly used as a way to get into and or out of fights quickly and with a surprise factor. Assassins love this relic and some warriors and guardians that need it to engage, for example a Sylvanas may want to blink in and ult to start a fight, they can use it as well. Burst of Undoing is an interesting one. Currently it's not seeing any player whatsoever outside of Duel, the 1v1 game mode, but that could definitely change in the future. This item restores 40% of the health and mana you've lost in the last 5 seconds. Upgrading it also reduces the cooldown and also takes 3 seconds off of all your ability cooldowns when you use it. So yeah, the general idea of this item is to take a bunch of burst damage, then pop this and heal for a huge amount. So naturally you want to use this on squishier targets that are more prone to getting bursted, but it's usually better to just get Aegis and take no damage in the first place instead of trying to heal it back with Bracer. You see what I mean about it not being very useful right now? That's kind of what I mean. And finally, Sunder or Sundering Spear. This item is complete garbage right now, unless something changes with it I would highly recommend you stay away from it. Especially as a new player since it is harder to use than a lot of other relics. Alright and finally, the two highly situational relics are left. Cursed Ank and Phantom Veil. These relics are in specifically a one scenario and are not general purpose buy this every game type of relics like Shell and the rest. Cursed Ank will reduce all enemy healing of the gods affected by 50% for 10 seconds, and when upgraded enemies healed while under that effect will also take 20% more damage. So yeah, as you probably realise, this relic is only useful against heavy healer compositions with gods like Ra, Hell, Sylvana, Guan Yu, stuff like that. And it definitely shouldn't be bought every game, only when you need it. And Phantom Veil vale gives all allies affected Ghost Walk, allowing you to walk through player made walls, but not terrain walls. When upgraded, you also gain damage mitigation. So yeah, Phantom is a very niche relic. It's basically only useful against one god in the game, and that's Odin with his ultimate's ring. Yeah, other gods like Thor and Ymir have walls, but they're not worth sacrificing a relic slot for. This is really only for dealing with Odin. Alright, so that's all the relics. In summary, Beads, Aegis, and sometimes Blink for Squishies, Shell, Heavenly Wings, and Horrific Emblem for tanks and supportive characters, with a few others being useful in niche situations. So finally, since they're not really a full item that I'm going to cover in later videos, Boots are something you definitely want early on in a game of Smite. With the introduction of the Elixir of Speed this season, you will likely be selling your boots later on in the game, but early on they're definitely something you want for the cheap stats. So currently there are basically 4 sets of boots in Smite for you to choose from, of which you could only have one. Which 4 you have depends on the type of power you use though. Two of the 4 are different depending on your power type, while the other two are essentially the same for all classes with minor tweaks. So for physical gods you have access to Warrior Tabai, Ninja Tabai, Reinforced Greaves and Talaria Boots. For Magical Gods you have access to Shoes of the Magi, Shoes of Focus, Reinforced Shoes and Traveller's Shoes. So let's talk about the boots common to both classes first. Reinforced Shoes and Reinforced Greaves are basically the same thing as you can see here. They both have 100 health, 20% crowd control reduction, a stat we haven't actually covered yet. Crowd control reduction or CCR is kind of self explanatory, it'll basically reduce the duration of any CC that hits you. So with these boots at 20%, a 1 second stun becomes a 0.8 second stun. Then as with most boots, these have 18% movement speed. And finally, they both have a passive that grants 3 protections every time you take damage from a god. This stacks up to 7 times for 21 protections and they last 6 seconds. The one difference with these boots is that shoes have 20 magical power and greaves have 10 physical power. For all intents and purposes though, they're basically the same thing. As you may have guessed, these are meant for tanks. Mostly these are better on guardians since the low physical power means warriors don't want them as much because it really hurts their early game damage potential, but they can be useful on warriors too, they provide the most defensive stats of any of the boots. And it's a similar situation with Talaria boots versus Traveller shoes. Both provide MP5, 25% movement speed, which is 7% more than all the other boots might I add, and a passive that gives extra speed when leaving the fountain to get back to a lane or a fight quicker. And similar to Reinforced, these boots have either 25 magical or 15 physical power respectively. So these boots are very specific. Most gods don't need the extra movement speed that these boots provide, especially in non-conquest game modes. In conquest though, some gods like the support or maybe the jungler who make a lot of rotations and need to move around the map a lot can make use of these, since they come with almost 50% more speed than all the other boots. Alright, onto the boots that are different based on your power type. 
So for physicals, your choice is between Warrior Tabai and Ninja Tabai. The main difference between these two being Warrior gives higher base power and Ninja gives extra attack speed and a small amount of mana, and they're also 50 gold cheaper. So usually Warrior is more valuable, since 20 power early game is better than 20% attack speed for most gods. However, some gods, mostly some hunters and a couple of assassins, can use Ninja Tabi quite well. But ability-based gods like Thor, Hercules, Ulo and the like will definitely want Warrior Tabi. And for magicals, your choice is between Shoes of the Magi and Shoes of Focus. The main difference being Magi Shoes offer 10 penetration early on, whereas Focus Shoes offer cooldown reduction and some bonus mana, and as with Ninja Tabi, they're also 50 gold cheaper. Both come with the same power and speed and have no passive effect, so it's really just a choice between extra CDR and mana versus extra penetration. Which one you want depends on your god really. Most damage based mages prefer the early pen on magi shoes, but some can also get focus. Guardians often like focus shoes as well, for the early CDI if they don't want to get like reinforced or traveler shoes for example. Alright, so that's it for blessings, relics and boots in the basic items guide for season 6. Be sure to stick around for the next ones coming in this series where I'll start to cover all of the full items in the game and when to build what. So subscribe and turn on that sweet bell so you don't miss the next one and all my other season 6 guides coming soon on the channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out you nerds.